All right, guys, welcome. I'm going to try to show you how to use Office 365 online to make a uh, spreadsheet, to make a data table, as well as to make a graph. So as you can see on the screen here, I've gone to Office 365, which is you know through the Dexter website and everything. And I've logged in using my Dexter account. Um, up top here, you've got different options. You've got Outlook, Calendar, People, Newsfeed, and OneDrive. OneDrive is the one you want to go to. Um, you might have you might not see all these and instead you might have something that just has dot 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 click on that and OneDrive will be one of your options once you've clicked on OneDrive you might you know if it's the first time you're going in you might have a video or something you can skip the video you might have to reload the page to get it to actually work and bring you to OneDrive um, if it's your first time you won't have all these files but what you want is new and it gives you a bunch of options we're gonna do an Excel workbook because we have to make the data table so once that loads up, if you're in sixth grade, you would have something like time in seconds, gotta have your units, then you'd have temperature in degrees Celsius. Um, as you can see, temperature ran into the C column, so I will double click and that should spread it out. Great, if that ever doesn't work, you can also just click here and drag and move it around. Um, I'm gonna make up some data here, 0, 100, 200, 300. Um, if I wanted to, I could just keep writing them out, but because I'm lazy, I'm going to highlight, and once I've got this pattern, I can just drag this down. I'm going to go down to 1,300. We've got to go two more, down to 1,500. Eighth grade, you can do that too. Temperature, I'm just going to make some up. Your data will look different, obviously, because you didn't make your data up. You actually took data. And then remember, or after a while, it slowed down, and then finally dropped a little bit more. So here's our made-up data. Now, to make the graph, it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. You just select the two columns. You come into Insert, right here, and then you'd think you'd want a line graph, but a line graph is going to graph time against temperature, treating them both as data. But time is just our uh, x-axis, so we want to make a scatter plot, and we're going to do it with actual lines, not curves or just dots. And here is our graph. Awesome. We've got a key for temperature. We know the blue line is that. Then we can start editing something. We want a um, more descriptive title. So our title will be something like temperature of wax as it changes state. Something like that. We also want our axes to be labeled. So they're horizontal. Let's do a title below the horizontal axis. And that is going to be your time in seconds. Notice how we're putting the units here and we're not putting the units in the actual columns because that would mess up Excel because it wouldn't know what to do with those letters. It only knows what to do with numbers. So time comes up down here. We're also going to want an axis title for the vertical. So we're going to do a, let's try a vertical title. Let's see if this works this time. Um, we put temperature. Again, we got to have degrees Celsius. Hit OK. No. I'd actually hit OK. Enter doesn't do anything. And it's a little stretched out, so we're going to change that from a vertical. We're going to do a uh, rotated. How about that? There we go. Perfect. Now we've got temperature and it's not messed up. And there's a graph. Very simple. Um, the one problem with doing this is that I can't, um, for whatever reason, it, I have not been able to figure out a way to copy this and copy it out. So what you'll have to do is go to File and hit save as and download a copy. And if you download a copy, you open it up in regular old Excel, and you're here. Gotta go enable editing for whatever reason. It's kind of annoying, Excel makes you actually enable the editing, but obviously I wanna edit it, that's why I opened it. And I right click on it and I can copy it, and then I could go over here and open up a Word document. Um, that's the states of matter test, so sixth grade, I'm not going to show you that, but I could go into a Word document, copy and paste it in. Um, another good thing about this, if we go back to the online version, is you can't see what I'm clicking on here, but I'm clicking on file, and I will hit share. I can obviously share it with people. I don't know why they make you click that. Who else am I going to share it with? And I can share it with my lab partners. So I am my own lab partner, so I would just share it with myself, but you'd share it with whoever you did the lab with. Here's the data table and graph. I'm not going to require a sign in. That just is one less step for our you know, lab partner to do. We want to make sure they can edit it. 
And the reason we do that is so that then when they receive it, if they want to make any changes or make it better or add some data, they can go in and do that. But then also, any data that they change in there, you can also see those changes so that you can work on it from your own house and you can see the changes that each of you make. I would then hit share. Obviously, it's just shared with myself. To give it a title, you're going to come up here, change it from book three to something like Wax Lab Cowman. Um, and this is actually going to be the second one because this is my second attempt. So now everything's already saved. If I come back out to Ross Cowman, you would use your name. You'd just click on that. And it's going to show all the documents. This is the one we just made. I can come back in here, and it's all still there. So remember, just to get it out of here, you can just download a, a version of this on your computer, copy and paste the table, put it into your Word document, copy and paste the graph, put it in your Word document, and then keep writing the rest of your uh, lab report. Hope this helped.